Well, good afternoon. I hope uh, you're having a good week to this point and uh, will continue to do so and be safe. And uh, this afternoon's devotional, um, I've entitled My Thoughts, Changes Are a Part of Living. And I'm going to read from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to start it off. And it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Do you ever stop to think about the changes that you have witnessed during your lifetime? I dare say that no area of your life has not been changed or has not been affected by change. A change for the better, a change for the worse, a change for the sake of change. Do I resist change or do I embrace it? Do I initiate change and can change motivate me and inspire me? I guess you might say that change may start when you take your first, first breath. You no longer need the oxygen supplied through the umbilical cord of your mother. You are now your own person waiting for all of life to come and experience. Physical maturity ushers in many changes throughout all phases. Your baby, <clears throat> in a blink of an eye, is now a young child. Another blink, a young adult. Still another, a parent, a grandparent, maybe an aunt or an uncle. We change from being dependent to being independent, and in many instances, change back to being dependent. During this life journey, we see the need to be prepared for our next adventure. The education process offers and equips us to allow change to influence our very lives and career paths. I've always felt that math classes taught us numbers, addition, subtraction, formulas, but more importantly, it taught us how to think logically, how to solve problems, and how to utilize good reasoning skills. In athletics, you have heard the phrase, the game speeds up, especially when you're not mature or prepared, causing one to make mistakes and make poor decisions, be very nervous, basically not seeing the entire field. But when preparation and maturity are in place, the game slows down, looking as if it is in slow motion. You can become locked in, make good decisions and choices. The game becomes easy. When you're in the height of your career path, the game slows down. The job becomes fun and easy. You have changed into a confident and competent young adult. Our spiritual lives are no different. Change is inevitable. God's plan for us creates changes in us um, all the time. It changes um, a desire. It causes us for, to have a desire to come to know Him and follow Him through our service to his people, our fellow man. Our spiritual lives, as we are introduced to Jesus and hopefully are attentive to his call to join his family, both here on earth and into eternity. <clears throat> our desire for knowledge begins as babes in Christ. <clears throat> as God, through the Holy Spirit, starts revealing truths to us, we begin to change. We want to follow Jesus' teachings and model our lives after his. Just think about um, how much you know about your faith. But just think about how much more there is to know about your faith. Our ability to embrace change is critical in our Christian journey. Seeking knowledge, gaining knowledge, demonstrating humility through wisdom, sharing of our time, our talents, and our material possessions are all natural changes that can and will occur. <clears throat> Never stop seeking knowledge. Never assume that God doesn't have more, much more, to teach us all about His love and His peace that passes all understanding. I sometimes start thinking that life is going too fast, that the world is spiraling out of control. But if I stop and realize who is in control, and know that my hope and trust are in him and I am a part of his family, then life's game slows down. I get back into my position. My thoughts, my words, and my actions are now in, uh, now in check and peace returns. 
<clears throat> I ran across this devotional by the Reverend Tim McConnell, and it's entitled, God's Plan Has Always Included Big Changes. It says a lot of what I've been trying to express, so I'd like to read it for you. I seem to remember in my younger days how slowly time would pass and how seemingly nothing ever changed, at least not very quickly. I am sure that things, people, and surroundings from the part of my life changed as they do now, but maybe in my youthful impatience they never changed. Everything was always the same. Now as I am considerably older, I sense time moving more quickly and change becoming almost a daily occurrence. I am reminded of the saying, nothing is permanent except change. Change seems to come at us in all areas of our lives. Societal beliefs and behaviors, values, relationships, our likes and dislikes, physical capabilities, jobs, careers, and living conditions and locations. I find I can no longer do the physical chores that I once could and certainly do not have the endurance to work or play as I once had. Our bodies certainly change. While change can be traumatic and devastating in some cases, with lives pulled apart and destroyed, change can be a wonderful event pointing toward a bright and promising future. Think of the addict embracing intervention and rehabilitation. The woman and her children who find a safe house from abuse. The couple reaching out for change that will save their marriage. A person who finds new, pur new purpose in change of employment. Change can be a lifesaver. Change can create a new person. Change can bring in new ideas, different and better ways of living and doing things. Change can bring promise of transformation, a fulfilled life and hope for the future. <clears throat> I think of our granddaughter who is just learning that scooting around on her backside has become old and she needs to change to a more favorable means of tra transportation. She has discovered crawling as a better, more efficient way of getting from one place to another. Our grandson is consistently changing his make-believe games to reflect more and more sophisticated thinking. Change is the agent of growing up and growing old. Scripture tells us of changes God initiated on the earth and in the lives of his people. The majority of the changes down through the history of mankind, mankind came about because of human choices. Because of sin choices in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had to relocate. The flood changed the physical appearance of the earth and decreased its population. God had to write laws for his people and then plan to send Jesus to fulfill those laws and provide ultimate salvation for those whom he had created. God knew that the hearts of the people whom he had created in his own image had changed, and he had to provide a way to change them back into a relationship with him. So God sent his son Jesus to turn things upside down so that things would once again be right side up. God intended for the Old Testament laws to be written on the hearts of his people instead of on tablets of stone. That the new way of salvation would be through two commandments. Love God with everything that you have and love your neighbor just like you love yourself. Jesus recommended a change in lifestyle for his disciples when he called them from the fishing boats to, to discipleship. There was a change in the words of Jesus when he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Jesus offered change to a rich young ruler, the woman caught in adultery, and the woman at the well. The incarnation, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus are all about change. Change from thinking and living for earthly accomplishments to embracing eternal ambitions. Change from membership in an earthly kingdom joining into the kingdom of God that can be established in our lives and hearts here and now in the moment. The most convincing evidence and testimony to the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the, awful, is the awesome transformation in the individual lifestyles of a new believer. <clears throat> and what is so amazing about God giving change in our lives is that if we allow trans transformation to continue, we can experience what Paul writes about in 2 Corinthians 3.18. We are changed into the same image of Christ from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the question is asked, are we actively seeking permanent change that will bring us into an intimate relationship with Jesus? As we are being transformed as a congregation, 
uh, here at our church. My prayer is that God's plan will be imprinted on all of our hearts so that His will can and will be done. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for our time together this evening. We thank you for the inspiration of your words. We thank you for the confidence that we have in you and your word and understanding that change comes and change is good. We just pray as we go through changes in our lives that we will continue to look to you for that source of strength and guidance and understand that your goodwill can be accomplished. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen.